some of you might have clicked on this video thinking, hold on, wait a sec, didn't you already make a Golden Shark Stealth Guide? Why are you making another one? And the answer to that is no, I didn't make a Golden Shark Stealth Guide already. I made two. <laughs> so this is going to be the third one. Um, in my defense, the first one I made was kind of bad and it was uh, pretty close to when the game came out. Uh, the second one was uh, elevator access, based more around elevator access and using the elevator access asset. Uh, but I never actually went back and redid the um, the non-asset version. Uh, because like I said, I want these self guys to be worst case scenario until they make assets easily accessible in game. Um, and until then, I'm gonna keep doing these videos about assets if I can. So. First things first, head over to this area, there can be a phone on one of these tables, um, and then you want that QR code. Next thing you want to do is, actually you probably want to do this before you go into the building now that I think about it, but you want to have a quick look through this window and just try and ping through it. If there's no, if you don't see anyone, if nobody gets pinged, then you can move on. Uh, so the next step then is to run over here, if there was nobody over there and you can place cameras through doors like this. Uh, so you place a camera behind the door. Have a look. There's nobody here. Okay, right, let's move on then. So we know that the uh, manager or whatever has to be back here now. If there's a civilian over there or over there, you still want to open one of these two doors first, whichever one you can open safely um, early because you need the, the way that we're leaving, we're going to be using this door. So, open that and then go over here. Uh, grab Rush from one of these people. And then we want to grab the phone in here behind the teledesks. Uh, this can be in a few different places. It can be there. I think it can be there. It can be there. It might be over here sometimes as well. Uh, but it's always back there. So, we have our QR code. I have fucked up a little bit, but that is fine. Uh, he can see me, which is less fine. There's a guard. Guard. Stop looking at me, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so then I know that the bank manager has to be over here because I already checked the other two rooms. That was the purpose of it. Uh, the red key card can be in a few places, it can be behind these, but normally you can see it hiding underneath them. If you can't see it then you might as well just search them anyway because it could be underneath them. If it's not there, uh, open the lockers from the bottom up because if you open them from the top, uh, you can't access them without closing them, so it makes more sense to open them from the bottom. Once we have the red key card, we can simply run over here. This guard is being a pain in the ass. Uh, at this point you have two choices, you're going to stand here and guess codes, so you might as well enter one code anyway because there's no point, uh, no reason not to. Uh, that's the civilian with the blue keycard, uh, as you can see he's holding it. Uh, it's this kind of guy in a grey suit, so, uh, if he doesn't have the keycard then it can be in a few different places. One of them is right here, it can be on this desk here. Uh, here's the server room, this is the next objective, so I'm just going to open this now. Uh, the shed says that you need to be careful of civilians, but that's a lie. Civilians don't give a shit about the cam uh, computer, so just ignore it. Um, the other place you can find a blue key card is over here. You have to creep behind this guard. It can be on the desk right here. And it can also be over here. If I can just get close enough to it. Uh, it can be over here as well, on this table here. These other rooms are quite rare though, it's normally on the um, the guy walking around. Um, you can figure out which room is correct before the game gives you this objective uh, and tells you where to go because there's, there's a sign outside that says IT department. So if you want to do this quickly what you do is you run up, you grab the keycard, you start the hack and then you run over here and you look for this IT department sign. If you don't see the IT department side, it's on, uh, sign, it's on the other side. So you just go over to the other side and then you just wait for the computer. Uh, and then you just keep waiting for the computer <laughs> because 
this game loves forcing you to wait. Pretty cool. Uh, but while that's going, I guess I can talk about the um, boxes. So we need these boxes a little bit later. There can be one here or there. Um, there can be one on the other side as well, which I'll go have a look at. You did it. Now reboot the connection. Uh, on that wall there or on the wall there. Obviously it's here this time. Uh, and then there is always one on this wall here. And there's also... Look out and this is really important because uh, this is something that I see people get confused about a little bit, but I think people get a bit less confused about this nowadays because the game's been out for a while. There's also one right there, but this guard never moves. Um, so the only reason to ever go for that box is if you're already in search mode, because if you if you go into search, this guard starts moving. Um, or if you mess up one of the boxes. If you mess up one of the boxes, it forces you to go into search mode. Uh, if you're already in search, it doesn't do anything. Um, and you have to use that box to um, complete the, the objective, because otherwise there aren't enough boxes to complete the objective. So once we've done that, we can go over here. Uh, if you do a thing really fast, you, you can get all this done um, in like three minutes or like four minutes-ish. So just find the code. Uh, uh, 4709, As soon as you open the door, a guard will spawn up there and walk over to this balcony. So you kind of just want to get over here as fast as you can to start this. Like that. Uh, this door is currently bugged in this current version, but assuming it isn't bugged, you need a bug key card, which you'll probably have by this point anyway. Uh, this leads to the com uh, camera guy. You can just kind of ignore him. You can place the camera there if you're playing solo, uh, so as you can see it's green, so... Put green, and then you can use the phone to find the colour, so as you can see it's red. Uh, you can kind of just walk past this guy, and most of the time he doesn't seem to notice you, but sometimes he might notice you and you'll go into search. If that happens, eh. Um, so it's red. So like I said, I'm going to do the free boxes over here because the extra box over there isn't needed because I'm not in search mode. So it's blue. And then I need to go do the one... Uh, let's go do the one on the, uh, on the other side. Actually, I can probably just go past them. Yeah, I can just walk past them. There's a guard. What's the last one? Red. That's that. Guard over there. Good. Now turn off the lasers. By this point, the guard will have moved around the building a bit, or uh, the upper floor a bit, so you can just kind of walk through here pretty safely. Excellent. Deactivate that, and then you need to leave again. Uh, if you're playing with in multiplayer, then I would recommend the person with the blue key card goes over there once the box is done, and someone else just waits in there the whole time. Uh, cause that way you don't have to like go back and forth a lot. Well, obviously if you're playing solo you can't do that, so go over here. Shade is absolutely full of shit and I will continue pointing this out in every single uh, one of these guides that I do where she says that you have a short window of time but it's like a full minute or something, it's really long. Um, and you have plenty of time to just walk over. Like, I have so much time left. <laughs> it's a camera. Uh, and you can open that. Uh, if you're doing this like really fast, you can get here by, by about five minutes. Uh, and then after this, here comes the part of the heist that takes the longest, especially if you're playing solo, which is bagging everything. I hope you enjoy bagging everything, it's really, really fun. Uh, this is a heist where you absolutely want transporter. Just because it speeds up moving all the bags by so much. Like, there's no reason to not have transporter. Uh, also, if you have the skill that lets you instantly open these if you have rush. I recommend grabbing the bags and then opening these uh, before you drop the bags because if you drop the bags you lose rush. So you want to grab a bag, open these stars and then drop the bags uh, just so you block them faster. Minor like optimization but it does save quite a bit of time because having to pick these properly takes ages. So there's the server. 
That camera in the back's kind of a pen, but it's not a huge deal because you can just kind of walk around it like that. And now here comes the fun part of this heist, which is moving all the bags. Uh, this might seem really difficult, um, especially because of that guard on the top floor, but there's something you have to understand about this game and about this heist, which is that these windows aren't real. <laughs> um, so if I ping them, you can see that the ping isn't going through the window, it gets blocked by the window. What that means is these windows are technically solid walls. Guards cannot see you through them. Um, there was a bug similar to this on Dirty Ice um, when the game came out, uh, where the window that leads to the like kitchen uh, was also solid like that and civilians couldn't see through it. They patched that wave of one of the recent videos, I'm not sure which one. Um, so now people will detect you doing sus uh, suspicious, suspicious activities through the window. Uh, but because these windows here are all solid, you can just do this. You can just, you can just throw the bags around, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't need to worry about um, being like careful with the bags at all. You can just literally just throw them in the middle of the room. As you can see, he doesn't give a shit. Um, and once you know this, it makes this heist so much easier because like, you don't have to worry about that guard at all. You can just kind of ignore him. If you're in search, you do have to worry about him, uh, worry about him a little bit because he will walk down the stairs and then walk back up periodically. Um, but otherwise, if you're not in search, it's really, really easy to just get all these bags out. You want to just get all these bags out of here as soon as possible, close the door, and now you don't have to worry about the camera. You can just throw all the bags down here. And then start throwing them over here. And I think from here you can tell kind of like where this is going, because from here there isn't really much left to do. And everything from here on out is a private area, not a um, secure area. So. Uh, you can sprint around, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, if you go into search here, because pr odds are one of the guards will see one of these bags and call in a search like that. Um, there are actually a few things you can do if this happens. Uh, unless they've fixed it, which I don't think they have. Um, if a guard sees these bags and then you get caught by him... Watch the court. He will escort you out. Please stay out of the restricted areas, okay? And then he forgets about the bags. Yeah, they haven't patched it. So you can literally do that. You can, um, you can intentionally get caught and you get escorted, be. and they will just forget about the bags. I think you took a wrong turn. It doesn't really matter too much uh, in this heist anyway, because going into search here really doesn't matter. Don't wander off. Um, but if you ever want to avoid going into search and you uh, and there's a guard investigating a bag in a private area, then you can just do that and they'll just forget about it. It's really, it's not, as I say, it's really useful. It's not really useful, but it is kind of useful. There are like situations where you can use it if you want to avoid going into search early. Um. And because for this whole like period of time you are moving bags, you're getting rushed constantly because of transporters, so the cameras don't even care about you either. Which makes this really, really easy. Watch the court. Uh And that's all the bags down the stairs. So now it's just a case of moving them to the van, which isn't hard, and because I'm not in search at this point, it literally doesn't matter. Uh, again, because we're constantly getting rushed from picking up bags, these cameras are completely irrelevant because we're in casing mode still. Um, and you can just close the door between like each run, so, uh, each kind of like area of the bag so that they don't see you. And um, that's it. That's, this is basically just the whole house here, um, done. 
if you uh, what? If you do this whole thing like pretty fast, you can get this done in about ten minutes, which is a pretty big improvement over how it used to be. Which was like, I think the fastest I did this before transporter was about maybe like uh, 15, 14 minutes, something like that. So you can very easily save a lot of time just by um being able to move two bags at once. It makes it so much faster. Uh, but yeah, that is my re-re-revisit of... re-re-revisit? Re-re-revisit will be one. Re-revisit. My re-revisit of Golden Jack. Yes. My re-revisit of Golden Jack. This should, I think, unless I fuck something up real bad, uh, include all of the information that I'm needed to include. If I forgot something, fuck, I'll have to do another, another video again. But I think that covers everything. Um, that's like really important. How did I miss a bag? You know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, if I, uh, yeah. Uh, that, that, I think I covered everything that I needed to cover there. That's important anyway. If there was anything that I forgot, then obviously the previous two videos exist and you can refer to those for kind of like examples of how to handle search and the elevator access has it. And um, a more sort of slightly timid near to launch version of self. But um, yeah, that should cover everything that I need to cover. So um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna revisit any of my other self uh, videos for now. Um, but I also may do some other videos of some other heists at some point soon. I was thinking about doing Syntax Arrow, but I did actually record a video for Syntax Arrow earlier, but it was kind of bad, I feel, and didn't really cover everything I wanted to cover all that well. Um, and I don't feel like I necessarily have played the heist enough yet to properly um, like cover it in the depth that I want to. So I might do syntax error at some point in the future, I might not. Um, I also might do some of the other, uh, the other heists at some point, but I don't, I don't really know which ones I would need to do. Maybe- no, I already touched Sky. Nine in boxes maybe. I haven't played nine in boxes in a while, but anyway. That is the video. That is the video. <laughs> I'm really bad at editing videos.